Yes, just as I suspected, it's you again, here in the attic. Okay then, since you're already here, ahead of me somehow, without my permission, in my house. Well, as long as you're here, we might as well go ahead and cover another mask for this week, because that's what we do up here every week in the mask. Fan attic is uh, get together and nerd out over... Um, monsters and this week's monster I don't have a whole lot to say about him uh, I don't have a lot of uh, you know behind the scenes anecdotes about him or anything but I do think he's a tremendously great sculpture he is this monstrosity and he is called Swamp Thug that's a right, Swamp Thug now I uh, assume that is a play on words on Swamp Thing everybody knows Swamp Thing the, the character well, this is Swamp Thug, because unlike Swamp Thing, who, despite his appearance, is actually uh, a good guy character, Swamp Thug is just a big, mean, nasty goon, as you can see. He's, he's more of an unpleasant customer than uh, his, his distant cousin, Swamp Thing. Now, this was sculpted by uh, the, the fantastic Mario Chiodo. The same guy who created the Killer Clowns for the movie Killer Clowns from Outer Space and the same guy who founded Elusive Concepts and sculpted uh, about 18 bazillion masks over the years for the Elusive Concepts company. How do I know this is an Elusive Concepts mask? Well, it could be because I'm really smart or it could be because there's a giant tag emblazoned with the legend Elusive Concepts mask hanging off the, the uh, side here. Again, wonderful sculpture. I love the uh, texture and the details, and uh, I, I guess he has so much expression. You know, a lot of monsters are, are grouchy and mean looking, but this one particularly looks like a big, nasty, unpleasant, uh, he almost looks like a, like a gangster among swamp monsters, and he would make an outstanding alien if you're doing a scene with Oh, you know, like the Jabba the Hutt palace where there's all the different uh, alien creatures around. This guy was born to play uh, that kind of role of some kind of supporting goon uh, for, for a more powerful alien gangster or something like that. Now, I'm, I don't know that he's supposed to be an alien because he's a swamp thug, but I'm saying he could be a swamp monster or he could be a space monster, depending on what kind of costume you put with him. You know, if you put a ghillie suit with him, he's an awesome swamp monster, but if you put him with a space suit or a robe and a big uh, laser gun or something like that uh, to make him look, uh, give him more of a sci-fi futuristic look, he's going to be a great alien. Again, fantastic uh, texturing all over, which was kind of an elusive concepts trademark. Unfortunately, on the downside, there's another elusive concepts trademark going on here, which is the fact that a lot of their masks were made out of kind of odd latex that was a little bit stiff and a little bit hard to um, convince. A little bit hard to uh, force into the position you want it in. So now he's supposed to be, you know, a, a fat swamp monster, so he's not supposed to be like that, but uh, he's not supposed to be completely as flattened out as this guy tends to get and I guess maybe it's time for me to take a hair uh, blower, hair dryer to mine and, and see if maybe heating it up will help with a little bit of that because he's not too bad. He's just got a little bit of uh, mis misshapedness going on there. Uh, although he's probably not as out of shape overall as the guy holding him right now. I will show you that on the inside of the mask, which is pretty nice quality by the way, inside the mask there are some little pieces of foam rubber glued in there to make it, uh, you know, sit right on your head when you're wearing it. Make the uh, make it stay in shape. There's one toward the back and one toward the front. So when you put it on, it won't just flop down. It'll kind of stand up like it should. But what a great character. Uh, nice, nice three-dimensional quality to his two big fangs there, his, his tusks. You, you see those? Those aren't just flat, you know, tooth fronts sculpted down to the, to the surface of the mask. They're actually, see, actual protuberances like actual teeth would be. And I think that's cool too. Love the choice of colors. A little bit of blue in the highlighting, blue on the lips, uh, nasty green uh, tartar stains on the uh, teeth and tusks and that. And just a cool mask. Not, uh, not a movie character and probably not worth a bazillion dollars, but uh, he, he is marked on the back. 
2000. Although, being a big, big heavy set guy, he moves a little slower than some monsters. So, uh, I guess that's probably why he didn't make it in time for the catalog photo shoot in 2000. So, he didn't get into the Elusive Concepts catalog until 2001. So, even though uh, he, he's not in the 2000 catalog, this, the um, engraved uh, area on the back proves that he was actually being made in 2000. But anyway, it's not really that important, is it? No. What's important is that he's a cool, fun, scary looking, highly detailed monster. These sold for in the neighborhood of 60 to 70 bucks, and that was 2000 in 2000 money. I almost said $2,000, and I'm like, no, I don't want to say that, because then the Dr. Brady said that mask was worth $2,000. But what I mean is, you know, you might say, well, $1,995, that's different from today's because of the inflation rate. So what I meant was 2000, the year 2000, there's money in the year 2000 was worth it. Can we just, can we just stop now and meet back here again next week? Yeah, let's do that. Thank you.